Well, Megan, I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now, but this month, my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship, international travel. Well, Sarah, that is a serious commitment, (laughs) right? You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30 day guarantee, wear them, love them or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code the mom hour 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one time use only. Bionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Megan. We're two moms with eight kids between us, from little to grown. We're in different areas of the country and in different stages of life. But we both know that motherhood's a lot easier when real moms share tips and encouragement. And remind you that it's really all going to be okay. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode 170 of the Mom Hour. I'm Sarah Powers, and I am here as always with Megan Francis. Hey, Megan. Hey, Sarah. So uh, lunch packing, huh? We I'm not are. there yet. You aren't, but you're going to be. <laughs> I know, I know. We I'm are. I'm just giving you a hard time. I know. I always want to talk about things seasonally before you're ready, but that's okay. Um, we are going to talk about lunch packing today. Uh, we're calling this episode How to Be a Good Enough Lunch Packer, because wouldn't you agree you and I are not fancy? That good? No, we're just good <laughs> enough. Yes, we get the job done most of the time. Get the job done, get the children fed, send them off to school. But I think with the amount of lunches we have packed over the years, I think we will have some helpful tips. It's fun to talk about the gear, like the stuff, you know, that really helps and how we organize it. Um, I wanted to mention that back in episode 151, which wasn't that long ago, we did a feeding the family, feeding a family series, and we talked about lunch. But that was more about what we feed our families for lunch. And Mm -hmm. we also talked about breakfast in that episode episode is more about the food. And today is much more about like the efficiencies and the gear and the tips for the daily school lunch packing. So it's a little different. But if you like that stuff, and you want to talk more about the food itself, definitely go back and check out 151. We'll link that up as well. Um, but Megan, you just got a new lunchbox I hear for Clara. I did. Clara just got one from Land's End. It is a soft sided, soft sided um, lunchbox, in, like the insulated kind. Mm-hmm. I have over the years had a multitude of different opinions about things okay. like such as a soft sided <laughs> lunchbox. And it, like anything else, I have found that my opinions about stuff like that change with my lifestyle and yep. the ages of my kids. So whereas five years ago, a soft sided insulated lunchbox was like the biggest pain ever. And we'll get into this. Yeah. Um, it now it's not anymore. And I actually found it really inspiring to get it. I'm like, actually she got it in the mail and it's so cute and I just can't wait to use it. I know. See you, you claim to still be in summer mode, but I know you're excited for all this little back to school gear. I like this stuff. It is fun. It's really fun. So we're going to talk about all of that. I also wanted to let you guys know that we have a fun little segment at the very end of the show. I'm bringing on Allison Thompson, who you may know from the crunchy cocktail hour podcast. She's going to be coming on with me once a month or so for the next few months because she's expecting her second baby. And just like we do with Katie, um, I thought it would be fun to kind of give you guys a little peek into her life about to change to a mom of two. So listen to the end. It's just a quick little segment today. You're going to get to meet Allison. And then next week, you're going to hear our first conversation about uh, pregnancy. So that's going to be fun. Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies. But having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. 
Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients, and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. We are welcoming a new sponsor today, Dr. Mom Butt Balm. Sarah, this might sound a little weird, but when my kids were babies, I actually really enjoyed changing diapers. It felt like a little time out to connect. Oh yeah, Megan, I can totally remember that feeling of just kind of leaning in and enjoying a little moment in your routine. Yeah, but when my babies had diaper rash, it made the whole experience so much less fun for both of us. And back in those days, we didn't have great options for rash cream either. It was usually goopy, heavy, and full of dyes and preservatives and other things I didn't really want to put on my baby's butt. Well, the creator of Dr. Mom Butt Balm, who is a mom and also a doctor, had the same experience, Megan, and she did something about it. Dr. Mom Butt Balm is free of dyes, preservatives, and zinc oxide. It's easy to apply, easy to remove, and you don't have to use a lot to protect your baby's skin. I really love the way this balm feels. It's almost like a high-end skin cream. Very nice, no strong scent, and definitely nothing like the diaper rash creams I used to struggle with. Don't let diaper rash come between you and your baby. Shop for Dr. Mom Butt Balm online at Amazon or Walmart today. Okay, so I kind of want to set the stage. We're going to jump right into lunch packing, but I'm going to ask you just some quick questions to orient us. So who okay. this coming school year, who will you be packing lunches for and who will be packing their own? So I don't know. So up okay. until I, well, I just, I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. Um, last year I was still packing for Clara every day and packing for, well, the three mornings I send them off. Cause John has them Thursday sure. and Friday mornings. Um, I was still packing for Clara every day and Owen admittedly, I was packing for him a lot of the time the night before I, and I do my packing the night before. Okay. Um, Sometimes I was letting Owen do his own or requiring him to do his own. And William was, for the most part, always doing his own. Okay. Um, this year, I'm not sure. It's the kind of thing. William is like, he's like good old reliable William. I've said that before. Yeah. He's going to pack himself something. And if there's a rule, he'll follow it. So right. if the rule is you can have hot lunch once a week, he will stick to that. Right. Like, but Owen will try to barter. Owen will try to bargain. <laughs> Owen will try to get more. Like they they just have different boundaries. And Owen will do that thing where he doesn't pack it. And then it's like six o'clock and he's on his way out the door or, you know, 630 yeah. on his way out the door. And he's like, oops, I don't have a lunch. Right. And then next thing you know, I'll check his lunch account right. and he'll have gotten a whole bunch of hot lunches. So I think I'm going to have Owen doing it, but I'm going to be supervising and making sure he does it at the same time. Clara is doing hers and she's probably going to want to help me. She's always helped me. So it's not yeah. like she is involved in it. And sometimes if I forgot the night before, I would say as I was running around doing the morning, I'd say, Clara, you know, go get the lunch. Um, we have a container full mm -hmm. of lunch supplies. And I'd be like, get that down and make yourself a lunch. And she can do that. But ultimately I, I guess the real question is who's responsible for making yeah. sure it happens. And Ultimately, I'm still responsible for Clara and I'm somewhat responsible You're for gonna Owen. You're going to be oversight with Owen. Exactly. Okay. Well, what about you? I'm packing all three kids. They're all at the same school. Um, Allegra has been well trained in making her own lunch and in theory, she likes to and can. We haven't built in a good time of day for her to do that. She Her mornings are too rushed. She already has too much that she has trouble staying on task with in the morning. Um, so that's not going to work. And after school, I also feel like, anyway, she knows how to pack a lunch, but my guess is that I will be doing it. And that's fine with me. I've told her that middle school next year, sixth grade, she will need to do it. So this is kind of her last like buffer year, whatever. She's fifth yeah. grade. Um, and I don't mind doing all three. I actually don't mind packing lunches of all motherhood chores. Um, so I don't I mind be doing either. all three. Yeah, it's it's more it's kind of like laundry. You know, sometimes it's easier right. to like we've talked about. It's easier just to do all of them. Right. Um, it's not to me. It's never the task that I mind. It's more like the having to do the task that I mind yes. or like remembering to do it and or fitting it in. That's the tricky part. And also having all the right gear and the right organization, which is what we're going to talk about, makes it so much, you know, less 
of a chore when you yeah. have everything. Um, okay. So my next question, I'm just curious because we live in different parts of the country. When and where do your kids eat their lunch at school? Is it like an indoor cafeteria? Is it about noon? I'm curious because I feel like all of these questions sort of impact the type yeah. of gear we go, we get into. Okay. So my kids eat inside um, and their lunches are not refrigerated. There's no option for that. There's no, there's also no option for microwaving. I know that right. in some smaller schools or like preschools, that is an option, but for us, there's not. Right. Um, all of their lunches get like thrown in this big bin, like this mm-hmm. big plastic tub yep. outside their school. And so one other thing that's been a challenge at the times that I've lost their mi- lost or misplaced or not washed their, um, lunch boxes. And I've tried to send them in with a bag lunch. Sometimes they lose it because yeah. it gets thrown in the set in this, you know, big bin and they, the kids don't look, think to look right. for something that's out of the ordinary. Right. Um, but they eat about, let's see, let me do the math here really quick. So they eat around noon and they get, Claire gets to school. I want to say it's about three hours after they get there. Okay. What about you? Yeah. So our, my kids eat outside cause it's California and I grew up here yeah. too. So like the indoor cafeteria with tables for Californians is like something you see in TV and movies. Like no one, cause they just send you outside on rainy days. They eat in their classrooms, um, which is annoying. So you don't really want that. So they eat in kind of covered picnic table areas outside. The lunches are also put into big tubs outside their classroom doors, but our classrooms are outdoor facing. They're like portable okay. classrooms. So those tubs are actually outside, which this time Oof. of year, yes. <laughs> So that we'll, seems like that we'll, would go melt fast. Yes, we'll get guys. into that and how important the ice packs are. I think some teachers will bring it inside or something, but there's just not a lot of space. So there, yeah. yeah. And then um, I was surprised because last year they changed some of the grades lunch times, and somebody I, th- I want to say first and second grade was weren't eating until like twelve thirty. They did take two snack breaks, so that helped. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, it's either just before noon or just afternoon, and we get that, out at two yeah. twenty. So it's that. It's, that that really changes what kind of food you can pack, though. Yes. You know what I mean? Without, like, really good refrigeration. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So for us, like, inside, I mean, yes, for August, or I'm sorry, for September and May, there might be some really hot days. It does happen. But for most of the time, it's going to be room, like, yeah. legit room temperature. Yeah. And even, like, a cheese stick, it might not, it might be a little floppy. But it's but not, not going to be a health risk, probably. Exactly. Yeah. It's going to be fine to eat. And so would a sandwich. I actually just realized that there is such a thing as shelf stable mayonnaise, which freaked me out a little bit, but actually made me feel a little bit better because mayonnaise was one of the yep. things I sometimes worried about. Yep. It's one of the and, things I won't send on the super when I'm, you know, when yeah. it's borderline. Um, are there any school rules? Like we are no nuts, not, no nuts of yeah. any kind. Are you guys? No, it's not that stringent. It's classroom by classroom. Okay. And pretty much peanut butter like just don't send it because there's so many kids with peanut allergies now that like it's just sort of you know implied. it's sort of implied like just don't okay. even if your kid even if your child's classroom doesn't have any kids that are peanut allergic then when they get in those kids then end up sitting yeah you know in certain at certain tables and then nobody wants to like yeah. ostracize the kid like oh, I do think it's great how kind kids are about mm-hmm. that stuff these days and how much they want to help their friends yeah. who have an allergy, which I think is new. Yeah. Like I think it's just it, part of culture now. It is part of a culture, which I, I really like. Um, as far as other, other nuts, I have not heard about any other nuts being banned. I do know that there are some teachers who are like, just don't send any nuts at all, which I find a little bit frustrating because, um, a cashew is very different from a peanut. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like as far as the frequency of allergies and there are people who are allergic to strawberries. There yeah. are people who are allergic to lots of things. Yeah. And when you're trying to pack a healthy lunch, that's got protein in it healthy and you're proteins. dealing yeah. and you're dealing with all these other restrictions like heat. And uh, sometimes there's the container like, yes. you know, some preschools have really strict rules about what kind of containers they can be and all this stuff. I feel like that sometimes they just throw so many rules at you that there's just no, there's no way to do it. I you know. know? So, I'm a, I'm a big fan of restrictions that actually protect specific sure. kids, but I'm not a big fan of like sort of across the board bans because the school doesn't understand allergies, right. which is what I kind of feel like it is yeah. sometimes. Like yeah. they don't really get the difference between a peanut allergy that's so pervasive that mm-hmm. a kid could die if they come in contact with someone's hand mm-hmm. and a nut allergy that might be a lot more minor. So I don't know. 
I, yeah. And it's not their business. They're not nutritionists either. So I get that. But it's like, ugh, it makes it really hard. Yeah, I agree. Um, we are totally no nuts. The, the, the upside of that is it's very simple. Like n- there's yeah. nothing with any nuts allowed. Okay, so do you have any lunch packing kind of goals for this year? You kind of touched on this or anything you want to do differently? I just want to do it. Yeah. Really, that's my goal. I, I just want to be consistent. Um, I don't want to be having that morning panic because I forgot. And well, and it sounds like yeah. your hot lunch for you guys is the fail safe or the fallback. Yeah. And for us, our school actually got a new hot lunch program this year. It looks really great. You have to, uh, you have to book in advance. Oh my so gosh, it, that would kill me. Right. It, it, it really isn't for my kids. It's more of like a treat. Like if I was traveling and wanted to save Brian the hassle of packing lunches, he's a very good lunch packer, by the way, he can totally do it, but yeah, um, it's hard solo parenting. And so I might prearrange hot lunch for something like that, but it, it doesn't work for us as a fail safe. The yeah. only thing that works if you like forget your lunch is in the office, they keep like bagels and stuff and they just give kids yeah. like a free snack but and no- I'm close I'm three blocks from the school if I need to drop a lunch off I can it's not the end of the world it's just you know one more thing right and right. um I do when my kids were smaller and I was packing you know four to five lunches a day yep um I had a thing where they could every week they could pick one hot lunch so they could all get hot lunch lunch hot hot lunch lunch <laughs> <laughs> hot lunch once um but they all i'd had the menu on the fridge they all had to agree on the same day oh, i like that and they got to rotate being the first chooser yep. or like the decision maker yep but the no way was i gonna let them all pick whatever yeah. because then it was madness and then i still had to pack lunches every single day so right, the whole exactly. idea of a day off was yeah. to give me a break as well as give them a treat yeah and and the good thing is most kids i feel are universally decided on which lunches are good yeah and which ones like nobody wants. Yeah. So uh, nobody was going for the Salisbury steak day. They were yeah. all going for like walking tacos day or, you know, one of those or the pizzas or whatever. So that was one solution. If you have multiple kids and you don't want to have a have madness, which you do yeah. on a day off, make them work it out. And yep. it's also kind oh, of I, a nice little teamwork thing. I use that strategy just in general all the time. I also because hot lunch is kind of a treat for us. I, ha- I used it last year as um, like a legger could earn hot lunch by making her own lunch a certain number of times. So if she made her own lunch, I forget how many times then I'd buy her a hot lunch because ours is expensive. It's good and it's healthy. It's a nice lunch provider, but it's not cheap. So for her, yeah. it was like a little bonus. Okay, so we've set the stage. We're going to talk about some gear. Um, so I just let's just talk about kind of our priorities for the lunchbox itself. Um, I'll just go first quickly. I my main thing is high quality because I make my kids use them for two years, and we've had good luck with that. No, um, we haven't lost any. One of them got like attacked by birds because there was a snack <laughs> sticking out of the side pocket, and so oh my some like, crows on the playground went for it. Jeez. Um, But in general, we do the Pottery Barn Kids, the McKenzie, which is their soft sided, like you said, insulated lunchbox. It's the McKenzie style. It comes in a million patterns and colors. I don't, I usually steer my kids away from like trendy licensed characters with a couple exceptions. I think Reed had a subtle Star Wars and it's not just because I'm a snob, although I am a little bit of a snob in this area. It's also because I want them to like it for two years. And so if it was going to be Disney princesses right now, I just don't trust that anybody's going to stick with that for two years. So the Mackenzie one comes in so many cute there. There's, I would say they do have licensed characters, but it's like 80, 20, 80% are just really cute patterns. Um, and so my other criteria, it needs to fit inside their backpack. Um, there's that easy lunch boxes brand. We're going to get into how much I like their bento boxes, but they, they don't, their lunch boxes that they make don't, fit inside a backpack very well because they're like they're like square I can't explain it they're like cubicle kind of instead of flat um so that's kind of a a a thing for me what about you what are your what 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 must it do well a couple of things one um I think it's really interesting that you brought up the trendy licensed character thing because I was racking my brain to think when was the last time one of my kids had a licensed character lunchbox And I couldn't remember. And I think maybe I trained my kids out of licensed character stuff so early that they don't even think it's an option. And my kids don't either. Underwear? They don't even... Underwear, pajamas, toothbrushes. That's that's where it's an option. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Stuff like that. But like they don't even... They never gravitate toward that kind of stuff ever. It's weird. And I don't... I mean, I don't think I was ever super like, ew, about it. We just always chose other stuff um especially clara like she is so Mm anti-character she would never ever ever i can't ever 
And it's not like she, you did that. She was just all her. She's just against it. But she also doesn't like pink. Yeah. She doesn't like inspirational quotes. We, we can talk <laughs> yes. about that another time. But she told me one time that she will never wear a shirt that has an inspirational quote. So ever. funny. And I was like, geez, Clara, you're like nine years old. How'd you get so cynical? She said, it makes me embarrassed for people. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. She's got a very specific idea about what she likes aesthetically. And the boys didn't care. Right. So if I just pointed out, you know, a simple one, I would like, always do you want to pick red like, or blue? yeah, red or blue, you know, <laughs> with like black piping or gray, you know, yeah. they would be like, okay, that one. And they really didn't care. So, um, Clara did have a really cute one that was shaped like a cookie and it had like, it looked like a cookie oh, that's and cute. she used that one for like three years. So, I mean, and it was just, it was cheap. It was like on Clarence at Meyer or something mm-hmm. and it was a soft sided insulated one. Um, anyway, so for my must haves, I would say size is really important. Um, small enough to fit in a backpack, but yep. big enough to actually fit some food for bigger kids. Yep. And this is one thing I'm sure you're going to run into more and more, Sarah. Yeah. I used to use like a lot of those little hard sided, you know, bento boxes mm-hmm. that have the really teeny interior containers. Yeah. Um, they are not roomy enough for bigger kids. Right. They don't store enough food, like of yeah. any one kind of food. Yeah. There's room for six it's grapes. All little pockets. Yes. Yeah. Or like there's room for a t- the cutest teeny sandwich that you cut into, you know, right. these really trendy pinwheels right. or something. Right. There's no room for all the stuff that a big kid wants to yeah. eat. And and odd shaped packages. Everything had to be broken down yeah. into and not packaged. Um also I will also say that, you know, another reason I don't need that kind of hard sided box anymore is my kids aren't as sloppy anymore. Right. So it used to be like they would come home with just it was like they just mouthed their food and stuffed everything <laughs> back in. And and then sometimes they were also at schools where that was a requirement. Like you couldn't throw anything away. You had to bring everything home that you Yes left with that is not our, the case anymore they can throw anything away that they want i do ask them to bring home any food that's like more than half like less than half eaten mm-hmm. and then that can be like part of their after school snack mm-hmm. i also want to see yeah i like to eating. see i like to, I see, like to see i think but my kids like, are encouraged it, i don't know if it's a school yeah. rule but i think they're encouraged to put stuff back yeah because i usually I mean, if see what it, doesn't get eaten if it's just a wrapper, I'm like, you guys toss it it's fine but like you know or like a wrapper with one thing in it or yeah. something but um Anyway, so I don't know if that even, Yeah, I, I do also really like the insulation because I know they're not super insulated. It's not like they're going to keep things cool all day. But I find that, you know, if it's something that maybe doesn't need an ice pack and the danger with putting an ice pack is you may never get it back. Um, that ins- the little bit of insulation yeah. does help keep things just cool enough. Yeah, I, I definitely think the insulation helps. Um, okay, so let's move on to the interior containers. So you have thoughts on the bentos and what do. what do you think you'll be doing this year oh well i mean this is not going to be super inspired um i am now in a less is more phase with mm-hmm. as far as the interior containers go i use a mix of those really cheap really thin sandwich bags mm-hmm. and the disposable like the little round disposable containers with the blue lids i yes. think they might be hefty or maybe glad gl- they're like yeah i know exactly which ones you mean i thought maybe they were ziploc but oh maybe ziploc well one of those right and they have them they have different brands so some are red and i think those might be glad i don't know mm-hmm. it doesn't matter you can get them at your grocery store what i like about those is when they come home which is 80 percent of the time mm-hmm. they are reusable yeah and when they don't i don't cry about it um i used to be much more into truly reusable containers that cost more and over time i just realized that there's perfect and ideal and Mm -hmm. then there's real and for me if the difference between sending my kids to school with a thin you know paper like like a paper thin sandwich bag that's going to get thrown away means i'm going to pack them a lunch and they're not going to throw away even more packaging right because they get a school lunch yep. then i'm okay with that totally. trade-off absolutely and that also has changed over the years because again like when they were in preschool they had rules in preschool they weren't allowed to bring things in in right. disposable containers right. so like you know i've over the years that's something that that I've gravitated toward. Also, my kids have become more independent and, and are more into packing their own stuff. And it's just easier to have a supply yep. of stuff that they can just use themselves. And then I don't have a drawer full of plastic, like as much plastic stuff too, which yeah. fits with my um, preferred Plus lifestyle. More. Yeah, <laughs> so, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. So I guess, so this is weird. I have kids who lose stuff and we're not the best at keeping track, but lunch containers 
do not go the way of the missing, you know, hoodies and fleeces and everything else. So we have not had a problem not bringing stuff home. And I think it's just because they're younger. So it's all built into the classroom routine of like, you put this away, you put it in your backpack. Allegra has left her whole entire lunchbox at school a few times, but it's always found the next day on the playground and the whole thing comes home. So I would say for us, the we do use reusable, you know, inserts of some kind. So I talked about the McKenzie lunchbox and there is at Pottery Barn Kids, you can buy the bento box that goes with that. Um, oh, by the way, guys, all of this will be linked up in the show notes. Yes. Anytime we do a very producty uh, episode, it's all at the momhour.com. Sarah, I think we should also link, sorry, I just totally no. interrupted you, but we should also link to the posts. Remember I did that whole lunch packing series on the happiest yeah. home years ago, yeah. because I think it would be very interesting to people for people to see what I was using then versus what I'm yeah. using now and just how both are great. Like yeah, it's fine. whatever it takes to get you to make a lunch is fantastic totally. in my opinion. So go totally. on. Sorry. Um, okay. So the bento box that goes with, doesn't come with it. You buy it separately, goes with the McKenzie style is called their Spencer bento box. And it's the one you're talking about. It's hard sided. It has one slightly larger compartment and then four smaller ones one of which actually has a little flap over lid so it you can actually close it even before the top of the whole thing closes if that makes sense like a little Mm -hmm. it's like an interior thing and I've had mixed feelings about them they they're very hard to fit in the dishwasher and they're also hard and annoying to hand wash so the washing they get like one star out of five on washability but they have lasted forever and they are made to go inside the lunch boxes I have so they fit perfectly so most days that's what we use if they're dirty or for some reason, I just don't have it um, handy. I also have Rubbermaid lunch blocks, which you can get in the grocery store. They come in these these like packages with a bunch of different sizes, and they also snap into this big ice pack. I don't usually use the ice pack. It barely fits in our lunch boxes. So it's really big and heavy. So I don't really use it how it's meant to be used, which is like this interlocking snap, snap together system. Yeah. But the individual little things themselves are actually great sizes and they wash really well. There's like a really little one and a medium sized one. And so that's Rubbermaid lunch blocks. Those work well for us too. Um, and the kids seem to bring them home pretty well. Um, I also have a couple thermoses, which, oh, I think I forgot to say of my like lunch packing goals for this year. One of the, the, the only one really is I want to send more warm food because we have a couple thermoses. They keep stuff warm really well. I just forget that that's an option to do like mac and cheese from the night before or pasta or something. So I do have a one thermos brand and one other brand little thermos. And that works too. The thing with our bento boxes, the ones that go with the lunch boxes, there's no room for anything else. It it fits the entire interior, but it, it works for us. So Um, I will, uh, to add to that, I think that's a great goal and something that I've actually wanted to do now for like two years and have not really done very consistently, but both William and Isaac for Christmas, like two years ago, got really nice thermoses. Mm -hmm. And for a while they were just, I mean, they were big too. Like they were big camping thermoses. They were just only taking a thermos to school. So it would like, it like clipped on the side of their backpack Uh or whatever. And then that was their whole lunch, but it would be full with soup or something. Right. And so that was it. That was all they needed. And it was actually nice. It was like a nice way to break things up, but they were at the age where they were both able and had the uh, personality type and all that. Yeah. um, executive functioning ability yes. to take care of that themselves. Yes, to bring so it home. yeah, I just made sure to buy like I would just buy those um, those quarts of soup. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about yeah. like in the little uh-huh. containers, and they would just glug glug like they would heat it and then glug 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 it in. So yeah, um, there's a tip for that that I learned from our friend Laura Fuentes of yeah. MamaBowls.com, and maybe everybody knows this, but if you boil water and put boiling water in the thermos just while you're prepping mm-hmm. everything else and put the lid on. And then when you're ready to put the heated food in, however, I like this morning, I microwaved some mac and cheese for Violet, but then you're putting it in a thermos that's already hot. So you pour the boiling water out, put the food in, and then it even more stays hot. I thought that was kind of So clever. that is awesome. Laura also gave me that tip at one point and maybe I, I heard it on your podcast or something. You might have, I don't know. She, well, she spreads it around. She's yeah. pretty generous with her advice, but um, I never like, I just never in the morning had the wherewithal to do that, but I do have an electric kettle now. Okay. And it heats water so fast that I think I'd be more likely to yeah, do it now than I used to be. Yeah, my tea kettle just sits on my stove and it never has very much water in it. So it's pretty yeah. fast. And I do have a pretty fast gas stove. Well, I don't have gas. Um, I have electric and that's right. that took, that, that added like five minutes. Difference. And it was always like the last minute. I'm like, oh, I should yeah. totally do this. And then I just didn't do it. So. I just like it. It I don't. It's a fun little trick. It reminds me of like when I worked in restaurants and you'd put 
ice water in a martini glass for yeah. like while you make the martini it's like yep. same idea i like it yeah um, um well to that to that end we should talk about ice and yeah ice, ice and thermos yeah and yeah everything else so um i have like such a random assortment of ice packs and I don't know where they came from. They're in my freezer. I don't know where they came from. I have them in all shapes and sizes, but you never know. Like I have some that are actually not supposed to be used as ice packs in a, um, you know, in a lunchbox. Right. They're the kind that you're supposed to put on your face and they're oh. peas, they're peas brand. And okay. they're like, they're full of all these little round. Like how like, you use frozen peas. If you, yes. need. yeah, yeah. So they're called, it's called peas. And it's like all these little round, like, oh, funny. um, I don't even know what you call them like pellets or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, so it feels soft and squishy and jelly. And those are perfect for like wrapping around something. Oh, and that's it's great. Actually not supposed to be used that way, but I use them all the time. As and I just am like, kids, please bring those back. I also had several containers that came with a lid, like a l freezer lid. Okay. So you can, and then like, so you would put the whole thing in the freezer, fill the container, but the con um, lid contained an ice like pack. Like an ice pack. Oh, that's, I've never seen that. Yeah, we'll there's, have to link one yeah. up. If um, I'm sure we can find them online. They are yeah. plentiful. But I've lost the containers but to most of them. it still works as a little But ice I pack. keep the lid and they're small. Yeah. So they're perfect. Like you can fit them in really teeny little spaces or like kind of put them inside with the fruit or whatever. Like if you're putting in the fruit in a yeah. bag or something. So... Um, those are great. The other things that I, the other tricks I will sometimes do is um, freeze a uh, juice box or yes. a yogurt cup or I always think that's a great idea. I go or do whatever. It. Um, and I I have like a supply of those in the freezer at all times and like throw that in there and it keeps everything cold. Yeah. And then by the time the kid eats, it's mostly melted. Yeah, that's a great, a great idea. Um, I have these, I'll link to them. They're called fit and fresh cool coolers slim. And they are, they're great size for, for again, for what I have set up with my style lunchbox and bento box, but it's like a disc. So it's very, very flat and square, maybe about five by five inches. And the lunchboxes we have, have a mesh zipper pocket on the open, the, the flap that opens. And so I slip one in there. And then if it's really warm, I will also put a second one under underneath the bento box so it's on both sides and they really work really well I like how flat they are um and I it's so funny you know how you do that thing where like you don't have quite enough of something and you're always looking for an extra one and it, it's it's eight dollars on Amazon or something to right. buy another six pack and it took me like I want to say for a whole year a couple years ago I was always short one or the kids would forget to put it back in the freezer so it was thawed but it wasn't frozen anyway now I have many one of those things is just order just order more you'll be yeah exactly so much happier. you'll be so happy so now my freezer's full of them and that's really the main one we have um and they work well Cool. So, um, okay. We talked about thermoses. Uh, okay. I wanted to mention two things that I do that maybe are a little different and that is with napkins and spoons. So all my kids have gone, gone to Montessori preschool where we've had to bring a cloth napkin, which is, yep. it sounds so funny, but they teach the kids how to spread it out like a little placemat. Yep. It's very cute. And, but I use cloth napkins even for dinner. And I've talked about that on the podcast. So I have a, when I say cloth napkins, we're not talking fancy They're These are from Bed Bath & Beyond probably 15 years ago. They're ugly as sin. They're like this brown plaid, but I, I fold it up, roll it up and stick it in one of the bento containers. And I still to elementary school, send a cloth napkin. And Allegra has told me a couple of times that somebody spilled at the lunch table and, and she's, she's to, to the up. rescue because <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. and it always comes home. So, and a yeah. lot of the times, half the time it comes home and it's not even been used so it just goes back the next day but if it's been used to mop up yogurt or something gross yeah. then it gets in the wash so that if you don't have cheap cloth napkins it's not just an environmental thing for me it's just like a habit and I think of it it's like it's just a better napkin than a paper towel or a napkin would be so yeah. it's not just about earth friendliness and then spoons this is a tip for yogurt if your kids have little yogurt containers or applesauce or anything with a spoon I have these cheap um, teaspoons for stirring coffee and tea and they're really really tiny so they're great for little hands and they were like a pack of 15 for I don't know they're so cheap so they will get lost throughout the year um, but Again, it's not disposable and it, it almost always comes home. So I don't really yeah. send other than a, I put their snacks in a Ziploc bag. And just like you, I have no judgment about the Ziploc bags, but pretty much everything that goes comes home anyway. So I do cloth napkins and little little silver spoons, little tiny teaspoons. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Um, I we have like an abundance of spoons. I don't know why we have more spoons than anything else in this house. Um, and I think honestly, I think it was because when my mom died, I found like a box that had like six boxes of like 50 <laughs> spoons. Oh my gosh. And I think that maybe she wasn't even planning a party or something. They're not, they're cheap. They're like cheap soup spoons. So I almost feel like this was some kind of party planning situation that 
we got a ton of spoons is the okay. point. And so in on the occasion, my kids need a spoon. I will usually toss one of those in there and it almost always comes home, but I don't care if it doesn't. Right. And um, but most of their lunches honestly don't require a spoon. So it's okay. not something I think about a whole bunch yeah. with napkins. I just grab whatever's on hand. If that's a cloth napkin, I've done that before. I use up old birthday napkins yeah. and holiday napkins that, you know, that I don't like to have around forever because they just become clutter. So th- that's a good thing. I have taken a paper towel and, you know, and torn it into four before mm-hmm. and sent each kid off with like a quarter of a paper towel. <laughs> like, don't here's, get too messy. Well, no, but here's the funny thing. More often than not, whatever napkin I send them with comes back completely unused. So I'm like, what are you guys wiping yourselves on each other? Their sleeves. Their sleeves. Yeah. Or their totally. laps. Or the not at all. They just or not home. at all. They yep. just like lick their fingers yeah. and call it a day. So <laughs> napkins, it's just kind of whatever's there. Sometimes yeah. I don't even bother. Yeah. And honestly, I, I just, I don't try. I try not to worry about it. <laughs> well, <laughs> so. I'm going to finish this segment before we take our sponsor break with one more little tip. And it does involve paper towels. And that is if you cut up fruit that gets like kind of slimy or like wet, yeah. like strawberries and pineapple are the two that my kids like that I might cut up and put in one of those bento containers. But if it like leaks and spills over, they'll be so mad. And so I just fold up a paper towel and kind of pat it right on top of that fruit. And then usually the bento lid will kind of hold it in place and they will totally eat it without it. They will complain with it. Yes. So it's just my tip from that is a really me good to you guys. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar, they have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them, and I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution, Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash MomHour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Okay. Okay. So we talked a lot about gear. That was fun. That was good. Did, yeah. I think well, that is the most important. Part, it is right? the most important. <laughs> um, so I guess this next little bit is going to be about kind of the routine and the efficiency. And some okay. of this maybe we've touched on, but let's get into it more. So uh, my first question is, when do you pack these lunches? Yeah, I ideally I would do it right when the kids get home from school, because that's a time of day when I tend to be in the kitchen. We're chatting about their day. We're unpacking today's box, right? Or a container. And so it just makes so much sense to, since we're in the kitchen anyway, um, to just go ahead and take care of it then. The the next ideal, the next most ideal for me would be during dinner prep. Cause again, I'm in the kitchen anyway. Um, and that's, and sometimes those, you know, sometimes I'm doing those things kind of simultaneously. Claire doesn't get home from school till after, well, after four o'clock. Yeah. So sometimes I'm prepping dinner right when she gets in the door. So kind of just like around then, uh, less ideal, but sometimes just the way the cookie crumbles would be first thing in the morning. Okay. How about you? I have been a morning person because I am a morning person, but I am considering doing a little bit the night before or, or doing some batch prep. We're going to talk about that in a second, like batch prepping some snacks and stuff like that. I don't mind doing it in the morning, but I'm always interested in kind of streamlining. And just because, you know, we talked recently about kind of our energy levels last week, right? When we talked about productivity and time management. And just because I am a morning person doesn't mean I have to like then put all of the things off until the morning because our our mornings are pretty hectic. So I have been a morning person. I usually do it when we're making breakfast for the kids. So they get up and my kids are early risers. So it hasn't been, hasn't been a big deal, but I'm, I'm considering shaking that up. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes it's like what works for you now that might not work right. for you later and whatever works, works. Um, that's what's worked in the past. And maybe this year it'll be a little yeah. bit different. So I don't know. Um, so where do you keep 
the thing, the, all of the gear we just all talked the about. The, and, and specifically, the I mean, the food is one thing, but also the lunch boxes. When they come home from school, the boxes and the bags and the thermoses and the ice packs and like, where does it all go? Um, I So I have a basket on top of my fridge that I use for like all of that stuff. So um, sandwich bags. Actually, no, in the new house, I'm keeping sandwich bags in a drawer, but I used to have this basket that I got by Scout. Okay. It's called the Divide and Conquer bin. Okay. Um, it's like a soft sided vinyl bin. And it was like the perfect size for storing in like what I used to have is a fridge that was built in to the cabinets. Right? Yes, I know what you and mean. So and so there's yeah, a cabinet above. There's yeah. a cabinet above and like you can't do anything. Up oh, that's there. my it's liquor really, cabinet. Well, yeah. Do you like have a, do you have a, um, a stool? How do you reach up there? Uh, I can just reach the bottom of the um, handle. So that's why I ended up keeping that up there because I had a handle on the side and I could just grab it and pull it down. But I don't like keeping individual things up there because yeah, it would get yeah. shoved and back. Wouldn't, I wouldn't like, be able to get something far back. I would have to get yeah. a stool. And I do have a stool. Yeah. So I don't have that particular cabinet. I do now, but it's like back so far that it's mm-hmm. really useless. Like it's so far mm-hmm. back. So now I just use the top front of the fridge, yep. right? And I have now I'm not using the scout thing only because I used it for like six years. And I threw it out when we moved because it was gross, but okay. it was perfect at the time. Um, so I would have had everything in that at one point. Now I have a basket and that in addition to like lunch snacks and stuff also has like cereal and stuff in it. So I have this, the, um, the sandwich bags and things in a drawer. So but that's that, and that's also everything. for like the, the lunch boxes themselves when they're not in use. No, those stay in the kids' backpacks. Oh, okay. So the kids empty out their um, bags and okay. because I'm usually doing all of it at once, mm-hmm. unless it requires refrigeration in which case it goes in the fridge and they grab it in the morning. But sometimes their lunches don't require any refrigeration and they go right back in their backpacks. Okay. So, okay. Good to know. I like picturing this. Um, Okay. So I have a cabinet. I have a big center Island in my kitchen and one side that's on the side by the pantry. One of the lower down cabinets just became the lunch packing cabinet. And it has a shelf where the three lunch boxes get lined up when they're clean and put away. Um, and then there's a little bit of extra room where I have the, the bento boxes and I actually keep the smaller containers, like the little rubber made, the little itty bitty ones, um, in an old unused lunchbox, like a big old lunchbox serves as like kind of a basket, if you will, right. for that kind of stuff. Um, and it, it has worked really well. The one, the Ziploc bags are on the other side of the Island and it's so silly, but it's one of those kitchen efficiencies thing where I think I just need either a duplicate box of Ziploc bags right. or I need to do something do something differently because it's the one thing I'm always walking to the other side of the kitchen island if I need a Ziploc bag but yeah yeah and I, I think in it, with the way my kitchen used to be laid out there was an island right in the middle and it really was a pain to get around yeah it sounds like the, it's like the biggest first world problem I can't <laughs> believe those words just came out of my mouth I know what you mean. Uh, but my new kitchen packing five lunches I know yeah but my new kitchen's a teeny little galley kitchen, and as much hassle as there is with a teeny catch- kitchen like that, there is some built-in efficiency. Yeah. Like literally, there is nothing in you my can kitchen turn I couldn't. Yeah, I could be touching if I could. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Gravitate. I could be touching everything in my kitchen at once with either a leg or a foot or a hand. It's kind of weird, huh? <laughs> that's a really interesting image. Isn't it an interesting visual? Um, so that's really funny. <laughs> okay, so what is the routine? So when they come home from school, do they yeah. unpack their own stuff? Yeah, it's mostly just throw everything away and then leave the empty lunchbox on the counter while I take care of it. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of where we are. And that was a new rule last year because the, the year before I realized I had been doing that part. So they bring their lunch boxes in, they unzip them, they take the bento box out and they do have a few things to do. Like if there's wrappers, they'd go in the trash or any extra food would go in the trash, but I kind of watch to see what it is. And then like the cloth napkin would just, they would set it out and put it on the counter if there was a spoon and then they'd put the whole thing in the sink. And then, then they take their empty lunch box and put it back in the cupboard where it goes. So that was implemented last year and they're pretty, they're pretty good about it. Like they don't, they can't do anything else until they do that after school. Yeah. Okay, um, that's a good. What about dishwasher? Does any of your any of your bento stuff go in the dishwasher? Um just the little whatever brand we haven't really been able to figure out. Yeah. Um the little containers. Yeah. That's the only thing. Everything else now we're just using soft-sided. Yeah. So, um no, I just we just open it up and I know you're not supposed to really use cleaning products in those things. You're supposed to just wipe them with a damp cloth, but I typically give them a spray or two with my Mrs. Myers. Oh, I have never thought about that. Counter spray and just wipe it out. I mean, I think probably the reason you're not supposed to do that is because then 
any food you put inside of it sure. maybe is touching something that's not supposed to be eaten but but it touches okay. a counter if you use it right on the counter. exactly yeah. and i and i i spray it and i wipe it out with a damp washcloth i let it air dry and yeah. then most of their food is in some kind of package the right. only difference would be like an apple right or something like that and like it just isn't really that yeah and no. it's, it's not that big of a deal I, so I have zero zero concern about that it keeps it clean i usually wipe the inside of ours with just like a wet paper towel and then i will wash them in the washing machine about two or three times per school year yeah. um and the pottery barn, barn ones clean up amazingly well they, it's like and i don't put them in the dryer i would put them on a very gentle delicate wash cycle and then put them out in the sun to just bake everything off and it's so satisfying it's so nice and clean i don't think they'd stand up to multiple washings and i don't think you're probably supposed to i'm sure it messes with the insulation so i don't it's yeah. not like i do it all the time but it's really nice um and it they really it's a nice option well. yeah and i have done i have tossed mine in, in the um, washing machine yeah but it's just not something i do on the reg no no I, don't, I wouldn't either and i don't find that it's necessary they get a little yucky but like not so yucky that like what usually gets yucky is the area around the zipper yes uh, but it's like I said, now that my kids are getting older and just aren't such total slobs anymore, like it's just a little less yucky than it used to be. Don't you? Kinda, do you have a memory of the smell of gross lunchboxes from when you were I, little? I was just going to say it smells like a, like an old apple core to me. It's there is a very specific. Yeah. Lunch like peanut butter smell. apple core. Yes. Um, but- I don't, I don't feel like we struggle with that either. So I don't know if the materials have just gotten better or all of the packaging and all the preservatives we all use. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know either. Um, that's really funny. Um, okay. So let's talk briefly about how or whether we do things ahead. Cause this is another kind of goal of mine this year. And I just started small this week as we went back to school by pre-measuring some popcorn. Popcorn is a really good uh, snack, morning snack for my kids at resource recess. So I pre-measured some popcorn into bags um, yeah. or, you know, could do the same with crackers or whatever. Um, I also was listening to the Girl Next Door podcast from their most recent episode, which was all about, you know, home efficiency hacks. And Erica makes entire sandwiches ahead and keeps them in the freezer in... No. Ziploc bags and her girls just grab them and throw them in the lunchbox. I, my mind was blown. So I would love like what kind of like turkey sandwiches. And stuff? I think yeah, she that? said mayo does not freeze well, but okay. anything else. So I didn't okay. I don't think she got into it. Um, but I noticed on their Instagram, people were asking all kinds of questions. People were fascinated by this. So if you follow the girls next door, just go. I'm sure there's more info over there. Um, but I just I'm very intrigued. We talked about prep dish. We we are sold on the idea of doing a bunch of stuff all at once. And I feel like when I had three little tiny kids, my mind wasn't there. I just couldn't. Yeah. I never had that prep time, but now I do. So I'm I'm very intrigued, but I haven't kind of figured out what exactly I would do to batch batch efficiency this yeah. year. Yeah. Well, um, one thing I do do do, <laughs> um, I do rely on some prepackaged snacks. Like mm-hmm. if I go to Aldi because they just have really good cheap snacks i'll probably get some of their um like cheese crackers that mm-hmm. come in the little containers stuff like that but i also try every time i go grocery shopping to have like at least two or three big things i can condense down to yeah. many small things right right and so what i do is when i get home and all that stuff is sitting out on the counter i just do it right then yeah you're smart if i put that box of crackers in the cabinet it will get eaten yeah if I put that box of crackers inside a bunch of containers yeah. or bags and stick it in the lunch thing, it probably yeah. won't. So, yeah. um, and then we have rules around that as yes. well, but in the summer I do tend to like lax. I let the rules get more lax and then it takes me like a month to get the kids back. Yeah. The, okay. Remember <laughs> you don't touch these cause they're lunch. Yeah. They're lunch snacks. No, um, that's really smart. And it's so easy. Yeah. Oh, I have to say something about grapes. Cause you mentioned that really quick. Yeah. I always just kind of snipped or ripped a bunch of grapes off and put it in I noticed my kids this is I guess it's so first world again but they will eat every single grape if they are taken off of a bunch but somehow when you have a bunch of grapes there's always those few that are nasty and then they kind of make the ones around them nasty and so anyway I've just decided if I'm already doing this food prep I will take and we're not not talking about a lot of grapes like 12 grapes or something I just will take them off and they they store easily more easily too because you don't have all of the stem um and just put the individual grapes in i feel like i've created well do you know now. what i okay so this is what i tend to do this is like another one of those weird tricks that you just pick up after the years of motherhood without really even knowing that you're doing it but yeah now that you're mentioning this i always pull out the stem 
you mm-hmm. know, off the top. And then there's always those grapes that collect at yes. the bottom. Yes. And just toss the ones that are gross, wash the rest. And those are the ones, those become the ones that get packed. And then the ones on the stems just go in the fridge to be. That's really smart. Snacks. That's kind of a different version of the same thing. Right. But it's the yeah. same idea. It's just easier to pack those. Like just grab a handful and throw them in and you throw out the little wilted ones or whatever. And yeah, it's like a social experiment. When we were on in Rhode Island this summer, my sister-in-law was like, there's been this great bowl of grapes on the table for two days and nobody's touched it. And she took them off the stem and yeah. they were gone within like 10 minutes. And it was adults and kids too. It's like, we can't be bothered to pull grapes off the stem. Well, anymore. I don't you know, know what it's it the, says. It's the same thing with, okay. And I think that that's something that with my kids does depend on the kid. It depends on like how much they like fruit. Yeah. And how motivated they are to eat the fruit. Um, I have noticed like Clara, all, it's not that she won't. It's not like she refuses to eat a strawberry if the green part's on it, but she just won't bother. She right. would pick something else. Right. I, uh, Owen will bother. He'll, he loves yeah. strawberries, so he'll work around the thing. But if I really want Clara to eat strawberries, I cut off the green stem and I cut them in half. I do, that. Eat them. I do that. I do that for my a, kids anyway. It's, it's just, just a psychological easier thing. way to eat strawberries. It's easier. Yeah. And then she doesn't have to worry about like how close to get to the green and yeah. She just eats the whole thing. Yeah. I know. It well, is, yeah, it I is think very... I started doing it because my kids won't, they, they'll, they'll leave like half the strawberry and think right. that it's done. So, yeah. so much went to waste. So that's kind of how I got in the habit of it. But that is so funny. A little side, yeah. a side tangent there. Um, okay. What else do we have to say about like prep ahead type stuff? Anything? Um, well, you mentioned freezing sandwiches and yeah. I was also going to say like it, certain things do refrigerate really well. Like pancakes came to mind immediately. If you, okay make pan- like a big breakfast on Sundays. And I always make too many pancakes because I cannot get the portions down correctly. Those can be refrigerated if your kids don't mind eating them room temperature. Yeah. And some, some really don't. And yeah. you know, they're not going to eat them with syrup, but some of my kids also don't care about that. They will just eat yeah. a pancake. Yeah, I would. Straight. That sounds good yeah. to me actually. Yeah. Um, oh, I was going to say too, that if you like to bake, um, just the internet has so many really good, healthy muffin recipes. Um, I don't even have a favorite. I just Google a different one every time if I'm feeling inspired and then muffins or mini muffins. It's such a healthier snack option than whatever else you would throw in there, which no right. judgment. Cause we all put the fish in there, but yeah, like I, I feel like a little mini muffin and that's again, mm-hmm. like bake ahead and then you have them for the whole week. Yeah. So, okay. So I, we are running short on time, but we have covered a ton of stuff here. Um, do you want to just briefly talk any, any food, actual food items that we haven't already touched on that you feel like works really well or that you've discovered over the years? Some go-tos. Mine are just really basic. Yeah. I mean, I do cheese sticks, fruit, uh, whole wheat crackers and sandwiches. I mean, yeah. Essentially that is our lunch. And my yeah. kids almost always get milk at school. Okay. So I really find that that is plenty, especially for Clara. She's not a yeah. big eater. So yeah, no, we're the same. I mean, we're, it's either a sandwich on whole wheat bread or lunch meat rolled up in a tortilla fruit, like apples or grapes. Um, and then some kind of snack, like we've already talked about only one of my kids will really eat yogurt at school, but yogurt or cheese, I will do dried fruit, dried blueberries, dried cranberries, raisins, um, and they also make the uh, much healthier yogurt tubes now than they used to. Yes. So that's not, there's a, well. I think it's stony field, one of the good yeah. organic brands and they have them at Costco sometimes. So when they have them at Costco, I pick those and up. Those freeze well. As um, well. again, one episode 151, the reason we kind of saved this for last and are giving it no time is because 151 was a pretty recent episode where we talked about what we actually feed our families for yes. breakfast and lunch. So you'll get more ideas there. And I just wanted to kind of finish with our usual pep talk, which is like, it's easy to see the pictures of these perfect bento box lunches or do you ever, I have walked by tables at my kid's school if I happen to be there around lunchtime and I see kids eating like cherry tomatoes or like mm-hmm. some kind of like ethnic like rice Indian food yes. from the night before. And I'm like, geez, Louise, like who are these kids eating this food? My kids are eating, you know, whole wheat bread, turkey, and like grapes every day for a year, but it's all okay. And your kids are okay. And you know what? They're still going to grow up to like different kinds of totally. foods. It's not. Yeah. And then, you know, it always balances out. Cause then you'll see the kid with a full size Cheetos in their yeah. lunchbox and you're like, no, oh, okay, well, I mean, I'm still, I'm doing all right. Yeah. So, and, and no judgment if you're that parent either. We're all like on the spectrum someplace. Right. And yeah. And sometimes you make choices at the last minute that aren't your best work. Yes, <laughs> so, absolutely. You know, I mean, this, it's okay. This school year just started. So we have 180 right. lunches. Yes. days of lunch packing times however many kids you have this year. So 
I sort of look at it as like, what can I sustain? I don't want to yes. start out like a like super mom and then have my kids expect that. So my goal is like, I don't care if they get the exact same thing every day for a year. I have zero, zero qualms about variety in school lunch. I do like it to be reasonably healthy. I like it to be stuff they will actually eat, but then that limits you. So they may yep. get the exact same thing. Um, but I think we, we covered a lot of tips here. It doesn't have to look like lunch. It could be leftover dinner. It could be whatever that kid will eat. And also, I just want to say something about the kids who don't eat their lunch at school. That's not, you are not failing as a parent if your kid's entire lunch comes home. First of all, it's super common. Um, and they're going to, they're going to survive. Like they're probably chatty or talkative or nervous yep. or like they save lunchtime for their bathroom trip or whatever, yeah. but they'll just eat more after school. They'll and there have been entire years where almost the entire year I've done hot lunch too. And that's fine too. Like wherever you're at and you know, what's important is kids being fed. Yes. Period. And moms being sane. That is also yes. important. Um, okay. So before we wrap up, I'm just reminding you that stick around and you're going to hear me uh, chat for just a couple of minutes with Allison Thompson, who you may know from Crunchy Cocktail Hour, which is a podcast in our Life Listen Network. Um, and it's a fun little quick conversation. And then next week she's back and we're going to talk more in depth about her second pregnancy. So all you out there who are pregnant, expecting baby number two, Allison is right there with you. Um, and then Megan, did you pick something for cue it up? I did. So I picked episode 116 and it was, um, the topic is back to school is mom's new year. Mm -hmm. So, or is the mom's new year. So the whole idea was that I think we did this one last year, right? Mm -hmm. This was last, yeah, last September, I believe, or August. <clears throat> um, the idea is that this is like such a good time to look at like a fresh start. Yep. And you can think about productivity, new routines, resolutions, things you want to do more healthfully, things like that. And it's a great episode if you're if you're needing a little kick in the pants or a little dose of motivation. It's good for that. I love that. So that was episode 116 from about this time last year. So you can just scroll back in your podcast app. It would be really funny because I think we even made some kind of New Year's resolutions, fall New Year's yes, resolutions. And I have no idea what they would have been. It's a whole year ago. I wonder if yeah. we did them. Probably not. Probably. But maybe maybe we each did like one. That's the thing about and cycles enough. and seasons, though, is you get to enjoy. I, I, we are recording this on my kids' first day of school, so I am filled with all of the promise, of, and you get to enjoy that whether or not it all comes true. It's just the yeah. feeling of exactly. Promise. Yep. So, okay, guys. Well, this was really fun. Everything we talked about, and there are a lot of products in this episode, is at themomhour.com. You head there, you look for episode 170, and all the links, except for the ones I forget, and then you email me, and I put them in there when I forget them. But no, all the links will be there. Um, and we will talk to you guys soon. Thanks, Megan. Bye. Okay, everyone. I am here with Allison Thompson. Hey, Allison. Hey there, everyone. So I am so excited about this. And what we're going to do today is just briefly introduce you to our listeners and give them a little teaser of what's to come in the next couple of months as we follow your second pregnancy. So why don't you just go ahead and tell me a little bit about um, who you live with, who's in your house right now, who's expected to join you soon and where you live. <laughs> Sure. So um, right now, it's just the three of us. It's my husband, Kyle, um, and I have a 21-month-old, to be 22-month when the baby arrives, uh, daughter. Um, her name is Claire. And we're expecting baby number two imminently, it seems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the actual due date? The actual due date is September 22nd. Um, but we're kind of doing a high alert in September because I was due with my daughter, at the end of November and ended up having her in the beginning of November. Okay. So just going on that sort of high alert, yes. <laughs> prepare for baby mode pretty quickly. Totally. And where in the, where do you guys live? We're in, right in the suburbs of Philadelphia. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we're opposite coasts right now. I know we are. I'm used to that. I feel like everyone I talk to on the podcast is remote. Um, what, tell us a little bit about work because you're a full-time working mom. That's part of kind of what you talk about on the Crunchy Cocktail Hour podcast, which hopefully our listeners will check out. But just tell us a little bit about your work, what you do, and also your schedule because that's going to obviously, that's always impacted when baby arrives. It certainly will be impacted, which I'm <laughs> looking forward to. Um, so yes, I'm a working mom. I work... Um, I, I would say nine to five, but I think that'd be a little bit generous, mm. uh, probably more than that. Um, I'm a management consultant and I focus in the healthcare industry. So um, mostly with just solving problems for organizations focused in, in healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, and I work, 
you know, mostly at a client setting, but I'm, I've been really lucky this pregnancy that I've been working mostly remote. Um, so it's, it's really helpful with daycare drop-offs and things like that. Does that like mean from that. home? What do you mean by remote? Sorry, yes, yeah. I mean by home. So um, either not at the client site, meaning my personal office right. um, here in my house, or my company's office, which is not the norm in consulting. Typically, you're you go there traveling to where the client is, or um, you know, if, even if they're a local office, you're still in their space. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've been lucky enough, I think, for the last six months to be pretty pretty much either home or in my home office, which has been fabulous. Yeah, that is nice. And your does your husband work pretty traditional? working hours as well. So Claire's daycare and like, tell us a little bit about what that looks like. Yeah, he he's also a consultant. So that's that's how we met. We mm-hmm. met at work. We're one of those couples. Mm-hmm. Um, and he works a pretty consistent schedule, but because he's also a consultant, it can vary. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it you know, sometimes with daycare, it can be a little bit challenging figuring out who's doing pickup and who's doing drop off. But because since I've had her, I have been in a pretty decent schedule. Um, I've been able to flex a little bit. Um, but the, the thing I'm really looking forward to is I'm with Claire. I had um, four months off, which okay. I know is not the norm. It's still that's still a pretty good amount of time off. But this time I will be taking six months. That's so, awesome. I didn't realize yeah. that. OK, yeah, that's I'm really excited. Awesome. I'm, I'm looking forward to just that extended time. You know, they're just a little bit more sturdy. That's mm-hmm. they can hold their heads up yep. a little bit, and so I'm excited just. That to also have that takes you through a off. lot of cold and flu season, doesn't it? From when we're recording this, not all of it, but um, the the bulk of it. Yeah, yeah. so I'll, she'll be going back, depending on when she's born, like the March April time frame, yeah. frame, which is going to be amazing. Yeah, so you don't have to do that whole first winter. Um, oh, that's great. Um, so you again are due in September, and just to give listeners a little kind of look ahead. We're going to bring you back next week. So a week from today for a little bit of a longer segment, we're going to talk about how this pregnancy has gone. We have a lot of listeners right now who are pregnant with their second. I say that like I know that, but I know because we get a lot of emails and it's, it's a time when people are like fully mom, like they're in mom mode, mm-hmm. but there's something about that second pregnancy that is like, oh, now it's getting real. Like, yeah, I, I got I <laughs> one got, I could handle. <laughs> right. Um, so I know listeners will love following along. So next week you're going to be back. We're going to focus mostly on pregnancy, the first pregnancy, how this pregnancy has gone, especially as you get on toward the end. Um, and then then we're going to hopefully ha- hopefully have you on every three or four weeks and just get updates on when the baby's born, how maternity leave is going and just the adjustment to life with two little girls. So this is just the tease. You guys listening, check back um, in next week for a little bit of a longer segment with Allison and also head to the show notes at themomhour.com and I will link up Allison where else you can find her and follow along and listen to the Crunchy Cocktail Hour podcast and all of that. So Allison, we will talk soon. All right. Talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like Chatbooks. Chatbooks makes it beyond easy to create beautiful photo books by importing your digital photos from anywhere, Instagram, Facebook, Google Photos, or directly from your phone. The books come in a variety of sizes with beautiful cover options and binding styles to choose from, and they start at just $15. Plus, we have a great deal just for our listeners. Use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20% off your purchase. Just download the Chatbooks app and use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20%. Hey everyone, Sarah here. Megan and I would absolutely love it if you hit pause right now, right where you're listening, and left The Mom Hour a rating and review. If our show has helped you feel a little more confident as a mom or a little less alone, that's one of the absolute biggest ways you can thank us. And it really takes about 30 seconds. If you're listening in Apple Podcasts, just navigate to the Mom Hours show listing. So not the episode you're listening to right now, but the kind of landing area for our show as a whole. And then scroll down to leave a rating or review. Thank you so much.